Hello everybody, welcome back to the channel. My name is Anna Chu, and today I'm here with a very special guest. Nobody less than Tayo Aina. What's up? One of the biggest YouTubers in Nigeria. But do you consider yourself a YouTuber or a filmmaker? How do, you, um, how do I introduce yourself? So, like, YouTuber, filmmaker, both of them, because if you're making stuff on YouTube, I think you're you're a YouTuber. And I also see myself as a filmmaker because I like I make I like I like to tell stories. Yeah. So yeah. that's how I see myself. And I think so you do a little bit more. Like if I look at your videos, <laughs> yeah. Some some I just think are ready for Netflix already. <laughs> We're getting there, don't worry. Thank oh, you. <laughs> Thank you. We're getting there. We're getting there. Give me your 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 Oh my god. Ah. I feel like a sharp boy so close. Before we sat down here, it was actually a whole hassle. I got my SD card and all of that. So we talked a little bit in the car already. Mm -hmm. And you told me that um you've learned everything that you've learned up to now from YouTube. Yeah, from so YouTube. Please explain how do we do that? So so when I started out, I I started taking pictures mm -hmm. like of places in Lagos and then I decided to switch and make a video okay. and I made the video on my phone so I was looking for where can I learn I don't even think there's like a proper film school in Nigeria so mm. and then I feel I, I don't like school like even my I'm even surprised I even graduated so. <laughs> <laughs> so I said okay let me just turn to the internet and I started learning how to how to like film how to edit stuff like that on wow. the internet watched a lot of videos like I was watching at least like 20 videos every day mm. Minimum of 20 videos on YouTube. Okay, wow. Every day, learning, learning, practicing, practicing. And then from there, the passion just came. And mm -hmm. I kept doing it. And like, we're here today. You are here. Wow. Yeah. That, so, that is really cool. So, <laughs> so actually, from YouTube, we can learn a lot. You can learn a whole lot. Like, everything, yeah. I, everything I know, majorly, 95% mm -hmm. was from YouTube. I didn't read a book. I didn't read any book. Mm -hmm. I, was, I was just watching people, mm -hmm. looking at what they did. And then practicing it, mm -hmm. like doing it my own way with my own camera. Then I didn't have a camera, I was using my mobile just phone. phone. Just wow, my phone. Really cool. So the moves, like the, the moves, like if you're trying to get a shot of this mm -hmm. this thing here, the way you move your body, mm -hmm. body movement, mm -hmm. angles, everything. Then I think one of the ways to learn something is also to like fall in love with it. I think I fell in love with creating content. So yeah. every time I spent watching videos, learning it was not like work, it was just like, it was just fun mm -hmm. to be learning something new. Yeah, that you really love it. Yeah, thank so, you. So, <laughs> what is the goal that you're going towards? Like, what do you see yourself doing in five or ten years? I don't know. Mm. Like, the way I live life, I just live, like, based on, like, what's, what's next? What next am I trying to do? Like, I don't live life based on, okay, four years' time, five years' time. Mm -hmm. Because I, if you told me two years ago that I'll be where I am now, mm -hmm. I would say it's a lie. Because mm -hmm. three, four years ago, I didn't even... I wasn't filming. I wasn't doing photography. I was not doing anything related to cameras. Okay. What were so you doing? I was an Uber driver. Oh, yes. I saw that in Venezuela. <laughs> so you were an Uber driver. Wait, yeah. I think you graduated, right? So you finished. I graduated, then I, I started what, what driving for Uber. What school did you do? Um, Federal University of Technology. Okay. It's a school in Nigeria. Okay. So your parents were very happy. You said, wow. Well, yeah. Like, like, oh, like my pop, my dad even had to come to my graduation just to confirm if I graduated because he knew that I didn't like school. <laughs> okay, okay. But I just made sure I just made sure I went to school and I eventually graduated. After I graduated, my the last time I saw my certificate was my graduation day. <laughs> As I I just gave it to them at home. Okay, take. Okay. Nah. So when did you start working in your field? I always knew I was never going to work for anybody. Like from when I was small. Okay. Like so I used to say that. You started out as an Uber driver. You had some other type of goal. You didn't I, want to work here. So I just the reason I joined Uber was because it was it was I like to do stuff where the amount of money I make is based on the amount of effort I put. Okay. Like directly. Mm -hmm. Like it's not like maybe I, I can I work so hard and then I still receive mm -hmm. the same amount of money. Mm -hmm. So when I went Uber came to Nigeria, I was like, Oh, Uber is in Nigeria now, okay. Mm -hmm. And then I didn't even know how to drive then. I learned how to drive on Uber, mm. so I'm uh, maybe if, if anybody, if any of you I carried back then, is seen this video, they're like, oh, oh this guy, <laughs> wow. this guy 
those those. So that's Africa for you. Things are things you can you can get. You gotta go. Oh, that's so. So I, I learned how to do that then. I, I, after school, so I just started doing Uber because I needed to make income. I needed to make money. And there was no other way I could make money except getting a, a real job. Yeah. And I didn't want to get a job. I actually went and applied for some jobs. And then they were telling me they were going to, some company were telling me they were going to pay me like $100 in a, $100? a month. $100? Yeah. And I had to come from work money to start the day. Wow. And it was, the place was like, when I calculated how much I was going to spend on, on transportation to the yeah, place, yeah. it was like $120. That's so I'm like, so you're working. I'm just wow. working to oh, pay. <laughs> so, so eventually, after that, I was lucky enough to eventually get the Uber job, and mm -hmm. I did that for seven months. Okay. After that, I actually got a real job for okay. three months. Okay. I was working as a web developer, whatever. Even that job, I learned how to um, develop websites on YouTube. It was, it was more like I think they wanted to give the the, the work to somebody outside. Mm -hmm. I was not like. I can I can build a I I, I, I can build a website because yeah, yeah, okay. and then I I try to learn because I I feel at every every position you hold you should always try to make yourself as valuable as possible. Yeah, sure. So that was what I was just trying to do. I was trying to make myself more valuable to them mm -hmm. so that maybe they won't fire me or something. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so I learned how to build a website, then I built the website for them, mm -hmm. and then. But then you also need to be a little bit bold, right? Because you, you wait. First you started as an Uber driver, mm -hmm. why you didn't even have a license? Yeah. And then you said that, okay, I can build this website for you while you didn't even have the knowledge. So yeah. is that is that something that is typically you or maybe typically Nigerian? So I think it's just like more of is I think it's just a hustler mindset. Mm -hmm. Like even if you don't know something, you can say you know it and then learn how to do it if you're yeah. confident in yourself yeah. i knew how, i i sort of feel like i'm able to learn anything i feel anybody can learn anything if they are if they are really interested mm -hmm. if they are really passionate about it there's nothing that is too hard to yeah. learn yeah so it's just interest yeah. when you're interested in something you learn so if i'm sure i, I i'm really interested in something mm -hmm. then i would i would i learn how to fly a drone mm -hmm. On, from YouTube, like mm -hmm. nobody held my hand and said this is how to fly a drone. Yeah. And even the first few flights were very risky, but mm -hmm. I just had interest. I knew I wanted to learn this thing. Mm -hmm. Even now, I'm currently learning how to fly an FPV, what which is, is that? The, that's the drone you said your husband wanted to get. Oh, the one you wear, yeah. Okay, okay. Those ones are way more complicated. Okay, but okay. I'm so interested in it, mm -hmm. and I want to learn it. Mm -hmm. So one of my best quotes I like is like living and learning. Mm -hmm. You live like every day. It's just to live and keep learning new stuff. That's how you develop yourself. So, in regards to goals, I don't really have any like long-term goals. I obviously have goals of like making an impact mm -hmm. with my videos. Like I feel I've seen. I didn't know these videos we were making it was actually making impact. And it was like when, but when you get some messages, where there was somebody that even sent me a message one. It was like they wanted to commit suicide or something, something, and then they saw that it was it was deep. No, it was deep. I've seen messages like that and just watching. Videos just show that okay, that there's more to life, that there's more out there. Mm -hmm. Like, it's you see some messages and you're like, yeah, yeah. like, wow. nice deep. So, wow. it just pushes me to just wow. do more. That's really good. So, can I add one goal to your list? I think you should really open up a film school. Like, <laughs> no, I'll so, be your first, so, your first so, so I, I have plans. I've not said anything about this. Like, maybe I'll say this on this channel. I have plans of like making like a YouTube, like a course, yeah. a film and YouTube course. Okay. That I can actually like give people to learn because a lot of the, every day I get messages. How did you how did you do this on YouTube? Yeah. How did you do this? How did you do this? Mm -hmm. And there are so many things that I know now that I'm sure if I knew earlier, mm -hmm. I would have grown faster. Yeah. So now I want to push out that knowledge to a lot of people, and I also feel one of Africa's one of the things that will make change in Africa is if we have more entrepreneurs, mm -hmm. if we have more people who will build businesses, mm -hmm. and then obviously those people will employ more people, and those people will also work for them for a while and also build their own businesses. Mm -hmm. That's how you would that's how we we'll build I think like it's a really smart thing to do. That's how we we'll build like the whole that's industry. Because this whole problem of unemployment, unemployment, yeah. if more if there are more entrepreneurs, there will be more jobs. Yeah. It's so, a struggle. So but I feel like African people are not really in school to be learn how to be entrepreneurial. No, that comes no. wrong. Yeah. While I think that's so much opportunity. It's so important man. Like all the things most of the things they taught me in school. I think the only reason yeah. I see like before I was like anti-school mm. like i was like i don't like school but now i think one of the things that i think school helps you to do is majorly for me the most one of the most important things about school is the people you meet mm -hmm. like it's an environment where you get to meet people mm -hmm. and you get to grow they don't teach us the main things That's we need to survive they just teach us how to work for other people mm -hmm. 
like and then people don't people just come out there are no jobs mm -hmm. like our, our president our president was saying to, to so many days ago that mm -hmm. there are no jobs that the jobs has finished I'm that's like, what he said yes <laughs> wow. Like, wow so so imagine living in a country like that and then you're still in school and you're hoping that when you finish you get a job yeah there are other people that graduate every year some of the people that have graduated four years ago have not gotten jobs. Yeah. So these are the people that are graduating yeah, it's now. Struggle, it's, yeah. it's, it's, so it's really deep. So I feel eventually if I, if I, my goal this year, before the end of this year, I want to have that course out that would actually give people, lay everything down for them, yeah. how to go about starting out oh, and make it easier so for them. Cool. Really nice yeah. So, so, okay. so right. that's, that's what I plan on doing. Yeah, that's good. So can you talk a little bit about what's it like to create content in Nigeria? Like for me, being in Ghana, it's such a hassle. Like I can carry my phone, but if they see any type of camera, they're just like, oh my God, no, 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 no. So how is that in Nigeria? I'm even surprised. Where we are now currently, guys, where we are is a restaurant. I'm surprised they even <laughs> allowed us to bring camera. They allowed our baby, I think you, she, she has been here before, but I think yeah, they actually, they're actually actually cool here for yeah. them to actually allow camera. But most places don't allow stuff no, like this. Don't, don't. So it's a problem. It's a big problem. And it's not just like Ghana and Nigeria alone. Mm -hmm. It's in a lot of places. Because people are new to like people are new to like cameras. People feel like when you bring out the camera, you're you're putting them somewhere. There's this whole insecurity. Mm -hmm. And then also people feel you're making money. Mm -hmm. Like, oh, you're gonna make money from this. Mm -hmm. So they need to make money from you. From them too, yeah, yeah. So yeah, so and it's not a culture. You're like I went to Dubai, I was filming, I was going everywhere. It's like mm -hmm. it's, it's their thing there. It's fine, yeah. it's fine there. Mm -hmm. Nobody cares. The film, film, nobody cares. Mm -hmm. But here it's like, it's a problem. And they're filming in Nigeria, especially Lagos. You can't film outside easily like that because there are area boys everywhere. Yes, yeah. They've I've taken my camera before. I've also heard about like, um, this, this police who come for you if you police, have Police, all of value. that. No. So how is that like? How do you do that? Yes. You just keep your camera in pocket when you're outside. So, so the police one is not even just cameras. Any young guy that they see that is just looking okay. Yeah, come they just come for you and they say you're a yeah, boy and they don't want to extort you. It's just yeah. extortion, just police just trying so to extort you. So have you had any encounters? Yes. <laughs> so explain to me what happens. Like so, I've had situations where police they stop me a lot of times and they're like they check my phone, they check and I tell them I'm a YouTuber. They don't even understand what YouTube is. Okay. Yeah. Then there's also that problem of education. They don't yeah. know what is happening. Yeah. So you tell them you're a YouTuber, they don't even know. Even when I was doing Uber, it took them a long time, like a year, a year or like months. Maybe like a year or a year and a half before they even knew Uber was in Nigeria. Wow. So they stop you, they'll be like, what is this one? Where are you going? What is this person? And I'm like, uh, it's Uber. So they don't know. Wow. So situations have been where they stop me and then they check my phone. Then they check. So some even say you should open your account details, your account app and all of that. Mm -hmm. it's, it's just them just trying to extort us. But is it scary because there have been killings? It's not scary anymore mm -hmm. for me, which is bad because it means I'm Sort already of, used to it while <laughs> which is which is not a good thing. So yeah, it's not lives, a good thing. Yeah. It's not a good thing. But like, I don't know. It's just the, it's just the world we live in. Wow. So do you think Nigeria is safe? Could I just come for a vacation? So you can come for a vacation if you're coming to places like Lagos, mm -hmm. okay. Lagos, Abuja. Mm -hmm. There's a, there's a lot of insecurity currently in the country now mm -hmm. at this moment. Yeah, yeah. Like even me myself, I wanted to do like before I came to Ghana, I wanted to go around Nigeria to okay. do a lot of places, okay. but I can't go. Because it's not safe. Mm -hmm. So I want to explore Nigeria. I want to showcase my own country more. But I can't. Because mm -hmm. you can't travel by road to places because yeah. of yeah. kidnapping and all of that. So I would say it's safe. Because this is such a... You know, people in the comment section, they'll be like, oh, you're saying your country is not safe. Well, it's not safe. There are many places that are not safe. No, I like, think it's not. Because like, the president... Excuse me, Mr. President. <laughs> you need to fix your <laughs> So it's... it's, it's and, and the problem with Nigeria's... Mm -hmm. Like Nigeria is Nigeria is such a beautiful place. Mm -hmm. It's such a beautiful place. That. But the problem is, and, and the government doesn't know how much money they are losing in tourism. Mm -hmm. Like if they could harness that tourism, I've been to yeah. so many places and I'm like, wow. Yeah, yeah. Like I just open my mouth and I'm like, so why are we going all the way to Dubai and all these places to go and wow. spend money when yeah, we could do this? Nigeria, yeah. But the problem is, like the problem is, you can't expect people to come to your country mm -hmm. if it's not secure. Yeah. Insecurity has to be solved by the government. Yeah not by individuals. Even if I want to do a business, mm -hmm. I want to build a resort, I want to build something, let's say, in the north mm -hmm. or in, in some parts of Nigeria where there's insecurity. Nobody will go there. And there's probability of them burning down my stuff or stealing it or whatever. So private investors wouldn't come if the government doesn't solve insecurity. So 
But Lagos, come to Lagos, like Abuja is chilled. Those are the two major places in Lagos. There are also other parts of Lagos too that, that of Nigeria that are safe. But I think the main place if you were to come to Nigeria should be Lagos, just like the way I'm in Accra now. Sure. So, so. so you see me in Lagos. <laughs> <laughs> no, <you> <laughs> Have you explained to me what I'm So doing? this is egusi. Okay, egusi. Yes, egusi soup with amala. Amala is made from yam. Why is it black though? It's made from yam, but the yam is dried in the sun, then it's grounded. Okay. Then it's so it's white before they turn into this. It's like whitish, but I don't know. By the time he's <laughs> smelling it. <laughs> okay. I wish they said anything like this before. It just doesn't taste like anything really. It's just a bit like fufu, but then different. <laughs> so yeah, so this okay. is it's made from yam. Then this is it's no, soup. It's made with like red oil and a lot of vegetables and stuff. Mm -hmm. And there's also goat meat in it. Okay. I'm sure you've eaten goat meat before. And the skin thing. <laughs> That's <Okay>. more. <laughs> okay, okay. So mine is a okay. with amala too. Okay. And then goat meat too. So what do you Let's think? Try. What do you think? Okay, you want to try? You want to try? Hey, try, try, sure. try, try. Just let me see your reaction. But to be honest, eh, my dad is like a Nigerian part. Mm, sorry, let me just let me just get yeah, your sure. I want to get your first reaction. Mmm, <laughs> so how does that taste? It's actually very nice. Ooh, shit. It's actually very nice. Okay. Mmm. Okay. Mmm. You see? Okay. Yeah, you, you can get used to it. <laughs> So mine is, uh, mine, I, mean, I don't need any reaction. Mine is Ooh. like, I'm used to it already. It's a lot of pepper inside. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah, so like I was saying, my dad lived in Nigeria mm -hmm. for 15 years. 15 years. Also something that was new. Wow. New to me. I didn't even know this before. And then he played for the Nigerian national team, football. Are you serious? So there's like a, I'm wow. a bit Nigerian too. Now. Wow, mm -hmm. 15 years, that's long man. So you have Nigerian in your DNA. Long. Something like that, yeah. He speaks Yoruba. Really? Oh, you are Nigerian, don't worry. And you? What language do you Yoruba. I'm from the Yoruba Okay, side. okay. So, I wanted to ask you, are you related to Jackie Aina? No, I'm not. Oh, we just have the same surname. Is yeah, that we just have the same surname. Yeah, yeah same exactly. Surname? Okay, sure. It could be though. You know, <laughs> she, she 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 watches my videos and she comments sometimes mm. on it. Yeah. Oh, that's nice. And we follow each other on Twitter. So. Niger in the house. Yeah. Yeah. So Twitter, what's up with Twitter? Can you still use it? Only with VPN. Wow. The government shuts it down. Wow. And then what are they trying to do with that? They accomplish that. They're trying to reduce. Them. Yeah. Yes. Exactly. It's freedom of speech. Wow. You know, we live in Africa, man. That's crazy. It's freedom That's of speech. Really You're trying to just shut down people's freedom of expression. Mm -hmm. So it's 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 just these are just some of the African problems that we face every time. And that's because uh, a tweet of the president was deleted because he was he made a statement that was sort of inciting violence against another tribe. Mm -hmm. So they deleted it, which is similar to what they did with Trump's tweets. Okay. But America didn't shut down Twitter. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so yeah, I don't know, man. It's just it's just. That's just what happens, man. So, it's the world we live in. For me and my family, it's happening like um, a big adjustment settling in, mm -hmm. in Ghana. Mm -hmm. But then if I hear your stories, I'm thinking Nigeria is the next step. It's like very difficult then. To settle down? Yeah. Coming so it's, from abroad. Or so it's not difficult to settle down, actually. But it's just the environment there is just. It's very similar to here. Okay. But it's just. We just have more issues. In terms of some stuff, mm -hmm. like in, I'm sure you guys have the insecurity issue here. Mm -hmm. The most important thing about anywhere you're staying is safety. Mm -hmm. Before you even start thinking about, oh, I want to achieve this, I want mm -hmm. to get a job, you think about your safety first. Yeah. So yeah. we have that problem. Okay. 
So that's just the major problem. It's just that insecurity that is a major problem. Mm -hmm. Every other thing is like, like Nigeria, people come to Nigeria and especially if you live in Lagos, in Lagos, you could be broke this year and by next year you've made money. Like yeah, you, yeah. it's a land of opportunities, just yeah. like New York. Yeah. So that's why everybody still stays mm -hmm. there. Keep out of it. Mm -hmm. Okay. But just this insecurity that is a problem. Yeah. Okay, imagine. So how you how you enjoy your you, it's, it's like <laughs> in the skin thing, it's really nice. So if you had to rate this on a scale of one to ten, what would you rate it? Can you help me with this will be angry at me. You will be angry at you. But <laughs> Thank you. Maybe I'm Nigerian because I'm liking this food a lot. <laughs> I'm liking it a lot. So this is like your fufu. So we have a lot. We have pen. Oh, we, we have we have amala. So we have don't eba. really have a lot of dishes, do we? Really? I don't know. Wait. I just know fufu, jollof rice, but then there's nothing else than fufu. Because there's fufu and then there's manku and that's it, I think. I think there's one other thing I saw here. Ampesi. What's that? Bold yam plantain or oh. mm. I don't know what it is. I don't even know. But I think we have I think we have more options for food mm. than you guys. Because we have yeah. eba, we have amala, we so have this, semu. This is eba. This is amala. Oh this is amala. Eba okay. is the white one. Okay, okay. Then we have semu too, it's also white. We have pounded yam. Mm. We have um, see we have wheat. Okay. We have that's five. Mm. We have we have fufu too. Mm -hmm. Which is six. Well it's our fufu is different. No, it's different. Oh. Your fufu is sweeter. Because okay. you guys add plantain. Mm -hmm. Ours is just cassava. Oh, okay. I think yours is cassava, cassava and plantain. Mm -hmm. Oh, funny. Okay. Okay, so what about jollof? Which jollof do you like better? Obviously, Nigerian jollof. Really? Mm hmm. 100%. I even mm -hmm. tasted the Ghana jollof when I came. Mm hmm. You didn't like it? I went to the toilet. <laughs> I had the toilet the next day. <laughs> okay, that's okay. good. I think coming to Ghana, you suddenly need some adjustments. I think everybody has that. But then, as for a Nigerian, you didn't really need that, just me. But it's very nice. Yeah, it is actually. So, can you make this? Mm -hmm. Did you know how to prepare it? Yeah, I sort of know. But it, this this takes a lot of energy to prepare because when you pour, like Are you pour the. It like the you no, know, you, you're stirring it. Okay. It's more like you're trying to make, like the way they make cake, mm -hmm. the way you stir the batter together. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think they stay the bag. But this one, you stay, stay, stay continuously till it becomes strong mm -hmm. with hot water. Okay. That's how this one is made. What about the stew? The stew? Mm -hmm. uh, that one is more complicated. But could you do it? No. I don't so know. Who I don't... cooks for you? Do you have a girlfriend? <laughs> yes, I have a girlfriend. <laughs> okay, okay, I see. I wasn't expecting that much. You just, you just slotted it in there. <laughs> okay. But I have a girlfriend. Mm. And she knows how to cook all this. Yeah, she knows how to cook, but... She's she's an entrepreneur, so okay. she doesn't even have time most of the time. Mm, she's busy. So most times we buy food. Okay. We work together on, on, on stuff. I'm used to eating out. I know yeah. sometimes it's not like healthy and healthy, but because of the life I live. No, but I'm, I think in Africa is very good because hmm? you can get so many healthy food. Yeah, you so can get so many food. Like this on the street. Yeah, no, oh. no, not on the street. Like from a restaurant like this, yeah, I could yeah, order it good. and then they just send it to the house. It's expensive, yeah. but mm. it works mm. <laughs> okay. because. Me not spending time cooking food makes me spend time on other Doing things. Other things yeah. And also the same with her. I, I see this thing where they're like people are always like, oh the African ways, the wife has to be in the house cooking for you. Mm -hmm. I'm like we have a wife that is doing a lot of stuff that yeah. she's trying to build a name for herself. Sure, that's very good. You need to, like, there are solutions to food now. You're not a baby. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Before you married, very but you know, <laughs> like you're eating now, yeah. That's so, so like, the most important thing is just like finding a way around it. Mm -hmm. So for us, we found a way around, okay, we just buy food, we just okay. eat, eat out. Then once in a while, we cook. Nice. So have, have we seen her in, in your video? So she's not there. You've seen her, but you, we just don't, you just don't know yet. You yes. keep it on a Yeah, on a little. I don't, I, don't like, I don't like stress. For sure. I don't like drama from all these social media people. <laughs> it's true. Do you find it difficult to be in the spotlight? Or are you happy about it? Do you get recognized? Because Nigeria is so big, right? <laughs> I think I'm indifferent about spotlight on film. Okay. But when I started out this thing, only up to now, mm -hmm. my goal has never been to, oh, I want people to know me. Mm -hmm. or I want, I just wanted to, my goal is just to create something of value mm -hmm. that other people can get value, that people can learn from or people can get value from. 
when I started, I was like, I didn't even know I was, it was going to be YouTube. My, my, where I saw myself succeeding was the tech world. Okay. Like I like I, I like building like tech stuff like startups, okay. like building and coming up with an idea. Because I look at stuff we use every day, every day like boats, like boats we used when we're coming here. Mm -hmm. Amazon, all of stuff like that. I'm like somebody sat down and thought about this thing and brought it to life, and now everybody's using it. It's making our lives easier. Mm -hmm. So my goal was to create something similar, something like that, and. Like me now, eventually venturing into YouTube, it was just more with the same mindset. Okay. Let me create something mm -hmm. that can give value to oh, people. Value, yeah. so, so that that was just it. So it's never like well, I, I sometimes I walk on the road and people are like, "Oh, Ty, I know you." Even when I came here, mm -hmm. and we're like, "Oh, in Ghana. yeah, in Ghana." Oh, that's cool. They're like, "Oh, uh, watch your videos." I'm mm -hmm. like, "Oh, okay, cool, thank you." Mm -hmm. It's just normal to me, like, okay, mm. but it's not like, oh, I don't let it like say, okay, now people know me. Mm. <laughs> you don't get it yet. Mm -hmm. oh, <laughs> And I'm also a very shy person. Mm. Yeah, I'm, people, some people say they don't know that I'm different on my videos, but I'm just, I have I to make the, the same videos. I'm the same, I mean. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. <laughs> so I don't like to, I'm just, like, I just like to be low key, man. Mm. Okay. I'm just enjoying this food. Right? <laughs> There's no questions left. <laughs> I'm eating, neither. So, guys, thank you very much for watching. Um, I'm going to enjoy my egusi. Is it egusi? And you, you're? I will do. I will do. I will do an amala. Well, comment down below if you've ever eaten this or if you know how to prepare it, then I'd love to, for you to come and teach me. See you in the next one. Bye. <laughs>